Hi everyone, welcome again. So till now we have seen how to set up the config server, how to read the properties from this config server in different microservices. So we have externalized the properties or the configurations to a different service, in this case config server via this GitHub repository. But we still have one problem if we modify a property in this repository, we still need to bounce the services in order to read the new value. And in this video, we will learn how to broadcast these changes to different microservices so that we can read the updated values without bouncing the applications. And as this lesson builds up on previous lessons, please check out the previous videos to understand config server, config client and reading properties via config server. So let's get started. Now, in order to broadcast the changes, we need a new dependency and that is Spring Cloud Bus. Spring Cloud Bus is a project under Spring Cloud Umbrella as you can see on the documentation. Spring Cloud Bus provides a lightweight message broker that can be used to broadcast the changes and here you can see example configuration changes. So when there is a change, we can broadcast the change using this message broker to all the nodes which are connected to this message broker. So let's see what happens when we use Spring Cloud Bus. Spring Cloud Bus needs a message broker and it supports two implementations AMQP and Kafka. Under AMQP, we have to install and run RabbitMQ or we need a running instance of MQ. And if we are going with Kafka, we need to have a running instance of Kafka. So we need to set up a message broker. The second thing is we need to add the dependency of Spring Cloud Bus to all the microservices. In Config Server and all the microservices, we will add the dependency of Spring Cloud Bus. So once the message broker is up and running and the dependency has been added correctly and the services are up, they will find this message broker via Spring Cloud Bus and they will be connected to this message broker. So that will kind of create a network. Now when there is a change in one of the properties, so we will commit that change in the GitHub repository and then we will refresh the config server. We will talk about it soon. On refreshing the config server, we'll notice that there is a change in one of the properties and it needs to be propagated to all the microservices. And that change will be sent to all the microservices connected to this message broker via Spring Cloud Bus. And that's how we don't need to bounce the microservices. Microservices will receive an event, an update event, and they will simply refresh the scope in order to read the new value. So let's start adding the dependency of Spring Cloud Bus in all the services, including config server and both the microservices that we created. So first of all, what dependency do we need? We will go to the documentation and here we can find the dependency name, which is Spring Cloud Starter Bus AMQP. So let's copy this one because in this video, we will use AMQP via RabbitMQ. I will go to the config server. And in the pom.xml, we will add the dependency of Cloud Bus. And this is coming from org.spring framework.cloud. Then we need another dependency, which is Spring Boot Actuator. And this is a required dependency. By adding the actuator, it will enable this config server to expose the endpoints, bus refresh endpoints that we can use to refresh the configs in config server. So let's add the Spring Boot Actuator dependency as well. this one and and let's copy these two dependencies because we need the same in the microservices as well first of all let's reload the project and go to the first microservice let's stop the application and in the pom.xml we will add both the dependencies which is spring bus amqp and actuator reload the project in the meantime let's go to the second microservice stop the application go to pom.xml and we will add that dependency here as well. Reload the project. So the Maven refresh is complete. What else do we need? We will go back to the documentation and here we see that we need RabbitMQ as well because we are using AMQP. So we need to have a running instance of RabbitMQ. Now with the help of Spring Boot auto configuration, when we have a running instance of RabbitMQ, it knows where to find the RabbitMQ server because the host would be localhost when we run the RabbitMQ on our local using the default port using default credentials. So we just need to start the RabbitMQ server and the Spring Boot microservices will find the RabbitMQ. We don't need to provide anything else. But yes, if we change the port or we change the credential or the user, in that case, we need to add these configurations or these properties in the application.properties file of that microservice. 
so let's have the running instance of rabbitmq how do we run rabbitmq we have two options we can download the rabbitmq and start it as an application or we can run rabbitmq as a docker container so i will use the second approach i will run the rabbitmq on my local system as a docker container and as i have a windows system i will use the docker desktop to run the docker container if you need any help with the docker desktop please watch this video first so let me launch my docker desktop and we will run rabbitmq as a docker container okay so in the docker desktop we can search for docker images for rabbitmq i will search rabbitmq and as you can see this is the docker official image for rabbitmq so i will hit run that will download the image and run the container based on that image we just need to provide some settings we need to bind the port so i will bind all the ports from my machine to this docker container all right and now we can run the container and you can see the rabbitmq is now running as a docker container we see server startup complete let's go to the next step and here in the documentation we will focus on this section which is bus endpoints when we integrate spring cloud bus it provides two endpoints actuator bus refresh and actuator bus environment and that's why we need actuator that's why we added the actuator dependency so what is this bus refresh endpoint so here you can see when we hit the actuator bus refresh it clears the refresh scope cache and rebinds the configuration properties so when we make a change in one of the properties we will hit this endpoint of the config server which will clear the cache read the updated value and send the notification to all the microservices and that event will refresh their cache as well and it will rebind the configuration properties or it will make them to read the new value and for that we need to expose this endpoint as well so let's copy this property and we will go to all the microservices including the config server in the application.properties file we can even expose or enable all the endpoints all the actuator endpoints so let me copy this one and add the same property in all the microservices microservice 1 and microservice 2 now we have everything ready let's start the applications and verify if we can see the properties without bouncing the server so i will start the config server first so the config server is up and notice it automatically connected to rabbitmq using this default port so that means this config server is linked with the rabbitmq let's start both the services as well so the microservice 1 config client and the microservice 2 which is config client 2 so the microservice 1 is up and connected to rabbitmq and let's revisit the controller and here we can see this microservice will read this particular property from the common application.properties file which is defined here in the github repository from this properties file and the current value is some hyphen value all right and let's check out the second api as well the second api is also up and running and linked to rabbitmq and if we check the controller it reads both the properties one from the application specific property file this particular property and this is the common property in the application.properties all right so let's give it a try let's see the current value first this is the first microservice and if we send another request we see some hyphen value which is coming from the application.properties file from this file and if we send a new request to second microservice we see this output this property is coming from this particular file and the second property the value abc123 is coming from the trade specific or the api specific property file now let's try to modify the existing property and we will see if we can read the updated value so let me modify this property abc123 and we can change it to 4 commit changes and if we refresh the microservice 2 because this is specific to microservice 2 this is trade api dot properties so if we send another request to microservice 2 we don't see any change in the property we still see abc123 and the reason is we have made the change but we have not hit the bus refresh endpoint of config server so it doesn't know anything about this change as of now and because bus refresh call is a post call so we will use postman to hit that request so let me open my postman here in postman we will add a new tab 
it's going to be a post method and we need to call the spring cloud config server which is running on localhost 8181 and now we need to call the bus refresh endpoint which is actuator slash bus refresh all right let's send the request and we see status 204 which is the request was successful it doesn't have any content to return and let's check the config server here we can see the keys were refreshed so now that we have called the actuator endpoint of config server and we can see that the keys were refreshed let's retry the same request but we still see the old value abc123 so we called the bus refresh endpoint and we can see the keys were refreshed in the config server but this microservice is still reading the old value what is the reason behind it the reason is the scope of this microservice has not been refreshed the property binding in this case is on the instance variables and these properties have not been refreshed so to do that we need to add a new annotation on the controller which is refresh scope this one and we will restart the service we will go back to the microservice one as well and we'll add the same annotation here as well let's restart this service So the service one is up. Let's check out the service two. Service two is also up. All right. Now, if we resend the request, we will see the updated value because we have bounced the application. So to test this, we need to make another change. Let's modify the property value to five. And resend the request. We don't see the update because we have to call the bus refresh endpoint. So let's refresh the property we see a success response let's verify the config server we see the keys have been refreshed and let's retry the request now and this time we see the updated value abc1235 this one and this is specific to trade api so we see this value in the trade api let's modify the common property as well in the application dot properties edit this to some value one and resend the request we don't see this value because we have to refresh the cache so that means if we are modifying any property the change will be propagated to all the microservices via the message broker and if we have the at the rate refresh scope annotation that will refresh the cache of the microservice and the service will read the new value so that concludes our discussion on the spring cloud config server we learned how to externalize the properties and move all the properties to a centralized server spring cloud config server then we saw how to read the properties in the microservices and we also learned how can we propagate the changes how can we refresh the properties without bouncing the applications so that's all for now see you in the next video thanks for watching